Hello everyone and welcome to our final lesson on typography. Uh, for this lesson we are going to focus on a tier 3 program Adobe Illustrator. Uh, now Adobe Illustrator is uh, a vector based program very similar to our last program we looked at Inkscape. Uh, the big difference between the two of them uh, unfortunately is the cost. Uh, one of the benefits of Inkscape it is open source and free to all users. Uh, Adobe Illustrator is uh, not free, it's uh, rather expensive. Uh, however, if you're in the graphic design field, I do highly recommend Illustrator because it uh, has a lot more functionality than Illustrator, uh, than Inkscape does, rather. Uh, so let's get started. We're actually going to do three lessons today as opposed to just kerning, but we are going to start with kerning and then we're going to, uh, to go on from there. So let's start uh, once again by typing out our text. So with the font tool selected, We'll just type in kerning, and let's scale this up. Excellent, looks good. Um, the first thing you're going to notice about Illustrator is there's lots more buttons and a lot more windows, a lot more toolbars. And uh, this is actually only a fraction of the amount of toolbars that are available in Illustrator. And since we're focusing today on typography, let's set Illustrator up to help us with that. So up here at the top of the screen, uh, in, the, in the top bar here, uh, it's going to say Essentials. Now oftentimes Illustrator defaults to the Essentials, and this is the layout of the program itself. So I'm going to open up Essentials, and I'm going to switch it over to Typography right down here. What's going to happen is uh, we're going to get a lot of changes over here. Uh, our program's going to look a little bit different, and uh, we'll have more toolbars and more options uh, to play around with here. So next, uh, let's start adjusting the kerning in this font. Uh, it's a nice strong font, rather bold. However, it does not kern properly when you're scaling it up. You can notice the gap here between the R and the N is very different from the gap between the E and the R, which is then different from the K and the E. And uh, it's hard to tell at this scale here, uh, but there is a, even a gap difference between these N's and the I's here. So we need to do quite a bit of manual kerning here in order to, to clean this up. So first, let's find our text options, which are located over here under the Character Options panel. Looks like a little A with a baseline next to it. We're going to click on that. And we're going to have a lot of options over here for manually adjusting our text. So very similar to Inkscape, what we're going to do is we're going to double click and we're going to put our cursor between some of these letters here. And then what we can do is we can go over to the kerning options, which looks like this little right here. And we're going to lower that to reduce the white space in between. Then we'll go to the next line and we will reduce this as well. As you see, we're having to kern it quite a bit more here to get more consistent spacing. Uh, actually, I'm pretty happy with that kern level there. Maybe we'll just drop it by a hair. And let's kern this over here just a little bit more. Let's trim this in here as well. Looks good. And then finally between the N and the G. There, that looks nicer. It's kerned rather well. And that's a simple lesson uh, on kerning in Illustrator. Okay, what we're going to do next is uh, we're going to move on from kerning and we're going to adjust what's called the tracking. Now tracking is often uh, confused for kerning. Uh, kerning is used to increase the space or decrease the space between two characters, whereas tracking uh, proportionally increases the spacing between all the letters. So if I select this text here and I adjust the tracking now, you're going to notice it is going to get larger or smaller, but it's going to do it proportionally. So the spacing between the letters is going to increase or decrease uh, in proportion to each other. Now this is very handy, so if you take the time and you properly kern your text, uh, you can then make some fine tune adjustments with uh, tracking if you want it to better fit uh, uh, the page, or the poster, or whatever design you are working on. Uh, be careful with tracking though, don't overdo it, uh, but it is a handy little feature if you need to make some slight adjustments. 
Okay, uh, the last thing we're going to play around today is called the letting. Uh, it's not the leading, it's the letting. And the letting is right up here, and this is, you'll find it just above the tracking options here in the character panel. Now the letting is used to reduce the amount of white space uh, between two lines of text to, uh, to bring that base point up or to bring that base point down depending on how you want to do it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our text here. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to type in a new line of text. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go up to the letting and I'm going to reduce that letting. Oh, sorry. I probably should select my text first. There we go. And you can reduce the letting and then you can start bringing it up and down depending on the amount of space you want it between. So that there creates a much tighter text. Um, of course, we didn't manually adjust the kerning in this text here, uh, so the spacing does look quite a bit off, as you can see, uh, especially the gaps here. Uh, so you'd want to go down and adjust the kerning, unless that's this particular style you're going for. Like if you wanted this to be larger, then you could drag this up and kind of create a neat little style here. Um, but that might make some graphic designers cringe there. So uh, once again, so we have the kerning options, individual space between characters. We have the tracking options, which increases the space proportionally between the characters. And then we have the letting options, which increases or decreases the white space uh, between text lines or uh, base lines, if you will. Okay, thank you very much for listening. I hope you got a lot out of today's lesson, and uh, have a good one.